<laughs> Amazing! And of course, leather seats, power windows, and a booming stereo are all standard. We got a number one victory royale. Yeah, Fortnite, we about to get down. Get down. Teen Titans, the cartoon about five teenage superheroes, or at least five anyways, there's a lot of them. The main focus is on Robin, Cyborg, Starfire, Raven, and Beast Boy and their many battles, antics, and personal struggles. This version of the Teen Titans is very well known for these things. It's also well known for the cliffhanger which happened because of a toy deal. And then Teen Titans Go happened. And then in 2018 we got this. We think we found a way back! Which ended up being a teaser for a Teen Titans Go vs Teen Titans movie and not a sixth season. Which literally everyone expected. And now you guys know where my hate for cliffhangers come from. Anyways, back to Teen Titans, there's a lot of variations of this DC team. Obviously, you have the mini comics, other TV shows in the past, present, and most definitely future, but in terms of games, there surprisingly aren't a lot of them. Some of them are playable characters in the Injustice games, and they appear in DC Universe Online, but when it comes to games focusing on just the Teen Titans, there's only three iterations of them, all of which are based on this iteration of the Teen Titans. Honestly, I have no good way of how to segue this into the intro, so today, I'll be looking at the Teen Titans video game, and still desperately hope for a sixth season, which probably will never happen. The game starts off with the Teen Titans being defeated by Slade minions. Just kidding. The Titans are just playing a game that's based off of them and doing pretty poorly at it. They try to inspect the game and some bright flash happens, suddenly leaving the Titans under attack. After taking care of their immediate problem, they find Jinx, Mammoth, and Gizmo out and about, which they find odd since their graduation from the Hive Academy isn't for six weeks. The Titans then track them down, where we find out that six weeks have already passed as if time has skipped forward. Unable to figure this out, the Titans leave to find Mobile Jumbo out of prison. When interrogating him, it seems that someone is now manipulating space. With further investigation, they discover why their lives are suddenly like a video game. But before that, the docks are under attack, so they go handle that and find out that Dynamite is being used to break criminals out of prison and find Plasmas inside, and after beating him, they leave and find Cinderblock outside, then they beat him at a cathedral, wondering why there's so many villains loose, then they head to the power plant, and then the world starts glitching out and... Hi Slade. Robin suggests that Slade sent the Titans the game and trapped them within it. But when they catch up to him, we find out that this isn't his doing and that Turnian is returning. So they try to take him down and of course, he's not real either. Suddenly they are teleported to the Master of Games, who sets them up to compete in the Arena of Games where at the end, they face Slade for the last time. They confront the Master of Games about giving them the game, but it turns out to not be him either. They then call out you, the player, for controlling the Titans and making them go through everything for your amusement. And then the game's over, so they're free now. Okay, a lot happens, but it's mainly just the Titans running into various villains constantly. While playing the game, you might not notice it, but when just looking at cutscenes, it definitely feels a lot more repetitive due to the structure of most of it being, here's a villain, run after that villain, beat that villain, move on to the next villain. The idea of everything being a game set up for the player's amusement is a nice twist on paper and there are some good moments that utilize this idea, but the reveal for it being for the player is too sudden. It doesn't feel like there's a build up or any hints towards it aside from them being in a video game. At the very least, it does feel like something that the show would actually do. One thing I want to point out however is that of all the villains that are in this story, somehow Control Freak isn't one of them. I know he fits more with TVs, but he's probably the most fitting villain for the story and isn't one of them. Whatever, the story's alright. Okay, there's gonna be some extreme bias with this, but the theme song is in this game and it's so good to hear it. Seriously, if this song is playing out in the open and you don't sing along, you are crazy. On startup, the game will play either the English, Japanese, and even the Larry version, which is a detail most cartoon games haven't done. To be fair, most cartoons don't have alternate versions of their themes, but that's besides the point. And since I'm talking about the theme song anyways, I might as well get the music out of the way too. It's pretty good. I wouldn't give it one of my favorite soundtracks though, even though the Teen Titans theme is definitely carrying it, but there are some solid tracks in the game, especially Thriller Driller, my personal favorite track. 
As for the art style, it's very good. Colors in certain aspects of the animation feels like it is directly from the show, bringing a lot of life to the characters. Though some places are a tad darker than it should be, but it's not bad enough to not be able to tell what you're doing. PS2 games tend to do that for some reason. This game probably has some of the most stylized animation I've seen so far from reviewing these games and I'm honestly pretty impressed. Not too many games have this level of animation for all of their cutscenes. In game there is plenty of dialogue between titans and it shows the relationships between them extremely well. Though for enemies it can get repetitive sometimes. Seriously this one slay quote you hear a lot during the final battle. Moving on, the show is also known for its occasional chibi moments and this game is no different with this detail. The HUD character icons change a lot, showing this off fantastically. The load screens are filled with this as well for a ton of characters aside from the five main titans. Now, with the voice acting, almost every character has their normal voice actor. And this is going off of the list for when the characters had their voice actors changed, I believe around season 3? You can correct me on that if I'm wrong, but at some point that did happen. The only one that's different is Mad Mod, and honestly, you probably won't notice it. And can I just say that it felt way better than it probably should have to hear Slate again after so long? Me? You give me too much credit. Remember, Robin, all the world's a stage, and all the- And all the men and women are merely players. Anyways, every level begins with the famous Titans Go line given by Robin, which is also really nice to hear again. During the story mode, you play as Robin, Starfire, Cyborg, Beast Boy, and Raven and are able to switch between them whenever you want. Also, up to four people can play the game, but for this review, I played the game with my brother, so there's two people the entire time. Every character has weak, strong, and special attacks, which are usually projectiles, that are used to defeat enemies as you progress. You can perform various unique attacks for each Titan by stringing buttons together or by charging up a button, which requires using some of the purple energy meter. You can also pick up and throw objects and enemies that are either blocking or stunned. Around areas are items you can pick up that can refill your health and energy, speed you up, make enemies slower, or give you an attack that hits everything on screen. At the end of most boss fights, the Titans have to align themselves so that they can unleash an all-out attack for lack of an actual attack name. During levels, you can pick up coins and certain collectibles to get points. At the end of every level, you are graded from A to C on how many charge, combo, and super moves you did, as well as the amount of coins you collected, leading to a total grade. The collected points are also added together to give titans that collect them more abilities. As you progress through the story mode, you unlock characters and stages for the Master of Games mode, which the abilities you unlock carry over to, by the way. In this mode, at least two people fight each other until one person is left standing. Whoever makes it to the end twice, wins. When going through levels, there is a lot of chaos, but it's mostly fun chaos. Sometimes each titan will be doing their own thing, or sometimes you gank up on a single enemy. You can even just lounge around and watch your teammates beat up enemies, honestly. But even through all of that chaos, there's still a semblance of teamwork in the gameplay. For one, being able to throw enemies at players allows for either cooperation with juggling between titans if successful, or failure with an enemy colliding with your face, which I feel the show definitely has sometimes. This happens often with computers as I'm not paying attention to them too often. It kind of forces you to pay attention to your teammates, even with the ones that are just computers. You get a lot of benefits for having good synergy with your teammates, even if they're controlled by computers. Then there's the moments where a titan is occupied and the others have to assist them, which still leaves enough characters for four people to play, and the moments at the end of the boss fights where the titans align themselves for the finishing move. These changes to gameplay not only make sure there's some well-needed diversity to the combat, but also points out the aspect of team synergy and how it being strong makes things much easier, while it being weaker makes things harder. The abilities characters learn matter a lot too, as they end up being stronger, larger, and more effective at taking down bad guys. Most of the time this is balanced as well by the existence of the energy meter, limiting the amount of times you are able to use them. Huge emphasis on most of the time. There is one thing that doesn't cost any meter to use, at least mainly, and that's supers, which are some of the biggest and most damaging moves in the entire game, and they sometimes multi-hit. Why? A super strong option should be using more meter than anything else, or at the very least the same amount of meter instead of being able to use it constantly with no penalty or cost. 
and since this carries over to the arena mode, you can imagine how infuriating it is to fight someone with an endless supply of damage. Some characters in the arena mode don't even have regular combos, and anyone that isn't the main 5 don't learn new moves. The developers really could have gone all out when it came to that. Speaking of the arena mode, characters can spam projectiles ridiculously easily to the point of basically cyberbullying. Also, the master of game section of the story mode is the most out of place part of the entire game. You go from fighting the whole time to these mini games where you're playing Pong and Galaga. They aren't even fun either, they just feel there. And guess what? Every person playing has to partake in these mini games, one after the other in order to advance. All four of you if possible. So if one person is having a bad time, it's just a lot of waiting. The worst part is, this is only two mini games, and then the final boss happens. Why wasn't this just a fighting gauntlet or something? Especially given that's kind of what the cutscene before this mini game alludes to. This is just time consuming. A fourth of the Master of Games roster is clones. And I don't mean just slightly different or have different moves, I mean, aside from visuals, they are the exact same. These could have easily been color slash costume swaps instead of being their own characters, which would then lead to other characters getting a spot, like Aqualad, Seymour, Killer Moth, Thunder, Lightning, Kid Flash, and maybe even, you know, the master of games, the person that made what all this is even based off of. Adding all characters together though, this mode has 36 characters, which is honestly a lot for a side mode. This is gonna sound very weird, but I'm very conflicted with giving a final verdict here. The character story, acting, graphics, and gameplay are all in tune with how the show is, at least to a credible extent, and there are some things I dislike about the game as well. However, I can't really narrow down whether the game is great, bad, or even just okay. And to be honest, I don't even think that matters here. That's mainly because of the up to four person multiplayer along with the teamwork and competition associated with it. I'm surprised to say it, but I feel that your enjoyment with this game is almost completely dependent on how many people are playing, more so than any other game I've reviewed so far. One player, despite the freedom of having every character available to them, is most likely to end up getting a little bored with both game modes, since they have to do all the work themselves and most gameplay is really similar, even with a character being occupied. Two and three players add banter and competition between each other, while still leaving room for teamwork and swapping between characters remotely easily. Two players definitely have the best arena fights though. Four players requires the most amount of teamwork, otherwise they'll just get in each other's way a lot in the story mode along with the game's general chaos, but they have the best team building and bonding moments and probably even more so for the arena mode, whether successful or not. Every one of these possibilities have their own experiences due to the strong aspects of teamwork and competition working surprisingly well together most of the time instead of clashing. I think this is the first time a license based game has fully captured the essence of its source material. This is the Teen Titans personified as a video game, which now that we're at this point, is pretty ironic. What's going on my fellow residents, it's me to Frozen Cavern and thank you guys for making it to the end of this video. So the final verdict of this is very weird, mainly because I didn't know how to generally feel about the game until I kind of had this revelation about the game being a personification of the Teen Titans themselves. I don't think any other game is going to make me feel this way, which is very weird, but this review series has made me feel many different things, so I guess I shouldn't be surprised that I felt this at some point, but it is what it is. Now I wish I had more footage of me playing this game with three or potentially even four people, but unfortunately, through the method I was trying to do, I could barely get any footage to begin with. So thank you to the people who tried to help me with that, but unfortunately that didn't work out. Now, when it comes to me actually doing this game, my brother for Christmas got me Teen Titans on PS2. So at some point I had to review the game. So me and him both sat down and played through the entire game. So my brother, I'm wanting to assume that you're watching this, my apologies for having to wait like a third of a year before getting to see the end result of this, but it's finally out now. So shout out to my brother, by the way, for taking time to play the game with me, as well as just buying the game on PS2 for me too. So I might actually keep that. He also bought me Teen Titans on Blu-ray, like all of it. So that's dope too. 
But if you guys have not already, make sure you guys go down to the description below because that's where all of my social media are located. My Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Discord, and Patreon are all in the description, and there are all ways for you guys to further support me, as well as get updated on stuff happening on the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more, as well as share this video out with your friends and family. But until the next video, take care.